Hey, I'm Rhett, and today I'm going to share with you two years worth of music theory classes. There's a big announcement at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around. Okay, so the first thing we need to go over are scales. Scales are different sets of notes, the most common of which are the major and minor scales that are differentiated by the 3, 6, and 7 scale degrees. Scale degrees are these notes. Each one of the seven notes of a major or minor scale is a scale degree. Today we're going to focus on minor scales, because I know that's the one you want to focus on the most. A minor or aeolian scale is not a specific set of notes. A minor scale is a specific set of intervals like this. By the way, a whole step means skip a note and a half step means don't skip a note. And that's because this set of intervals can be placed using any note as the root. Root means the very first note of the scale. So you can have an A minor scale or a G minor scale. Both scales have the same intervals but not the same notes. Now, any minor scale has seven basic triad chords. These are the most important chords and all the chords you need to know if you're just learning about music theory. There are more chords like suspensions or extended chords but those come up less often and will be discussed later. Now, those those seven chords I told you about are hiding here. All we gotta do is find them. But to find them, we need to know what they look like. A triad chord is built off of three notes, a root, a third, and a fifth. These names come from the intervals the chord has. By intervals, I mean the harmonic distance between the notes. The root means note one, third means you skip note two and place a note on three, and fifth means you skip note four and place a note on five. These spaces are called thirds because you count one, two, and three. One, two, and three, so thirds. Now there are major and minor thirds. You may have heard about there being major and minor chords. Well, this space right here is what defines whether the chord is major or minor. A major third is a dead space of three notes in between your chord notes. A minor third is a dead space of two notes in between your chord notes. Minor chords have first a minor third and then a major third in them. Major chords have first a major third and then a minor third in them. That means that this is the only note that defines whether the chord is major or minor. So if we had a diet chord, which means a chord with two notes and those notes were the root and the fifth, we wouldn't be able to easily know whether the chord is supposed to be major or minor just by looking at it. We would have to guess from context, and part of that context can be the scale we're using, which brings us back to the minor scale. Like I said, a minor scale has seven triad chords, and now we know how to find them. To find our first chord, place a note on the first note of the scale, which is called tonic. Now this is our one in terms of this chord. So to build a triad chord, remember that chord is built on a root, a third, and a fifth. So if this is one, then we skip two and place a note on three. Now we skip four and place a note on five. These spaces are counted only between notes on the scale by the way, not all notes. And there it is, our tonic chord. By looking at it, you can probably tell that this interval right here is a minor third, because it has two empty notes in between. When we count intervals, by the way, we count all notes, not only scale notes. And this interval right here is a major third, so this would have to be a minor chord, specifically a C minor chord, or in terms of the scale, a minor one chord. I'll explain this notation later. Now, if you apply that same method to the rest of the notes of the scale, you will come up with these seven chords. Now, you probably have two questions in your head right now. First, what is this? And then, why did I write the chords in Roman numerals? This is a two chord, of course. But if you look at it, it has a minor interval here and again a minor interval here. And if you remember, major and minor chords have one major and one minor interval. So this can be major or minor. That's because this is a diminished chord. Diminished chords have two minor thirds and they do not sound very good. That's because this interval between the root and the fifth is a tritone. Tritones are very dissonant and we do not use them very often in music theory. And now the second question. Roman numerals are how we identify which chord we're using, in this case a one chord, and which status this chord has. If it's a major one, it's written like this, and if it's a minor one, it's written like this. These different chords have different properties and lead to different feelings. For example, the one chord feels like home, and the five chord feels like far away from home. So a great and very classic way to end a progression is by establishing home, then taking us far away from it just to end up back home. And there it is. That is the basics behind how minor scales work. Now, if you want to know not only how minor scales work, but also how different chords affect each other and how to manipulate them to create the feeling you're looking for, I have a great announcement for you. I have spent the past four months completing and perfecting a book that contains the easiest to understand explanation of everything there is to know about music theory. I have spent the past three years taking college level music theory classes and learning as much as I possibly could about this topic to help not only myself, but people like me that want to know all the hacks music theory has to offer and I'm happy to say I have finished it. In this book you will find literally everything you need to never have beat luck again. In it, you'll learn the reason behind why modern music works and the way it does and how to make your own music work as well. There is everything from how to use the circle of fifths to different harmonic functions, from consonances and dissonances to how to get better at making melodies using counterpoint. I am extremely proud of how this book turned out and I am confident that it will mark a 
before and after in your music career. I am so confident in fact that I am offering a free version of this book. So if you feel like you might be interested in the book but don't want to commit just yet, you can get a teaser with all the basic music theory you need for zero dollars. You don't have to follow me anywhere or give me your email either, it's completely free. And when you decide you want to buy the full book, it will be available for $39, except it won't. For this whole month, it will be at the discounted price of $29. And if you use the code RED20, you will get on top of that a 20% discount. That code will only be available for the first 20 people who use it though. So if that sounds like something you might want to check out, the link in the description will take you straight to the book or just go to redbowmusic.com. Yes, I made a whole website for this one product. Thank you so much for watching and if you have doubts about the book, just download the free version and I guarantee you'll want to see more. Remember though, the free version is a lot shorter than the full one. The free one is about 20 pages while the complete one is closer to like 80 pages. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you for spending this bit of your busy life with me and as always, say it.